And I rise today to, to honor the life of an agricultural icon, Pat O'Toole. And I'm here in a bipartisan way with both senators from Wyoming and both senators from Colorado to talk about this remarkable man who was a true cowboy and a dear friend. Pat passed away from complications following a stroke February 25th. He was surrounded by his family, including his loving wife, Sharon. And Pat and Sharon met when they were students together at Colorado State University. They have three wonderful children, six grandchildren, and we are honored to be joined today in the Senate gallery by Pat's wife, Sharon, along with their daughter, Bridget, and their granddaughter, Shabon. Pat and Sharon own and operate Ladder Ranch. It's located outside Savory, Wyoming, along the Little Snake River. The ranch straddles the state lines of Wyoming and Colorado, which is why all four senators are here today on the floor to pay honor, tribute, and recognition to this remarkable man. It is a large-scale cattle and sheep operation. It's been in Sharon's family since 1881. Now, Mr. President, that's nine years before Wyoming became a state. We're talking about a long history. Pat and Sharon liked to tell people, and they did when they would come to Washington, and Pat Wood, when he would testify here on Capitol Hill, he said they raised cattle, sheep, horses, dogs, and children. And Mr. President, they did it and do it very well. I deeply admire Pat for his passionate work on conservation, on water, and on agriculture. I saw the difference that he made, that Pat personally made, by partnering with others, regardless of whether they were Republicans or Democrats. Pat didn't care at all about party affiliations. He was famous for working with anyone, anywhere, who was generally interested in making life better for our Western agriculture communities. Pat also served Wyoming in the state legislature for six years, three full terms. In 2005, Pat was elected president of the Family Farm Alliance. Well, he brought this experience and expertise right here to Congress. He testified many times before the committees in the U.S. House and Senate, and here's a point when he was testifying in a committee in which I was involved. Look, members in both chambers quickly learned a valuable lesson. The lesson was this. Pat O'Toole is a reliable in the committee's witness seat as he was in a horse's saddle. As ranking member of the Senate Committee on Energy and Natural Resources and former chairman of the Environment and Public Works Committee, I had the privilege of calling on Pat to testify numerous times before the Senate in both committees. Most recently, he testified at an Energy Committee hearing on extreme drought and on wildfires in the West. Pat's firsthand experience with active forest management as a tool to prevent wildfires provided the committee with very much needed Western perspective as well as offering solutions. Pat O'Toole leaves behind a legacy driven by his passion for conservation, his love of the land, and especially the Little Snake River Valley. It's been such a privilege to help induct Pat and Sharon both into the Wyoming Agriculture Hall of Fame in 2022, recognized statewide for their long history of service to the people in the state of Wyoming. Pat truly represented the best of Wyoming and the best of Western interests, and he did it with dedication and distinction. It's a great joy to know him, a great joy to work with him. Mr. President, I'd like now to yield the floor to my colleague from Wyoming, Senator Cynthia Lummis. Mr. Chairman. Senator from Wyoming. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Today I rise also to pay tribute to a Cowboy State Giant, colleague and friend Pat O'Toole. Pat was not born in Wyoming, but you never would have guessed that. There was no one more dedicated to Carbon County or the Cowboy State than Pat. When Pat met his wife, Sharon, he fell in love not just with her, but as Senator Barrasso said, his adopted home of Wyoming, and together they raised cattle, sheep, horses, dogs, and children. 
My own daughter, Annalise, was born the same month that Eamon O'Toole was born. Sharon and I enjoyed the fact that our children would get to grow up together. He often joked that he was raising a menagerie with Sharon, but his commitment to ranching stretched far beyond his property as he would ultimately dedicate his life to serving the agriculture and conservation communities. I had the privilege of meeting Pat when we served together in the Wyoming legislature. His stories and infectious smile loomed large. He quickly earned the reputation for finding common ground with anyone, and we always look forward to hearing his stories about nearly getting arrested in Tierra del Fuego, being accosted by a machine gun wielding police officer in Argentina during a revolution, or hitchhiking from Maine to Florida with a buddy in college. Pat O'Toole lived a very interesting and large life. He was also larger than life in the best way, and he cared deeply for the people he served. Following his service in the Wyoming legislature, Pat was appointed by President Clinton to the Western Water Policy Commission and he focused on the future of water in the West. He was instrumental in providing very carefully thought out testimony regarding the future of the Colorado River. We all benefit now as Senator Hickenlooper and Senator Bennett and I continue to work on Colorado River issues together. The position he held on the Western Water Policy Commission deepened his love for conservation efforts and led him to serve on many advocacy groups to fight for farmers, ranchers, and rural communities until he died. As much as Pat dedicated his life to protecting Western landscapes, he'd be the first to tell you his family was his greatest achievement. Please join me in keeping his family in your prayers as we come together to celebrate his life and the indelible impact he had on his beloved Wyoming. I yield the floor. Mr. President. Senator from Colorado. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I want to say what a great privilege it is to be out here today with my colleagues from Wyoming and, and my colleague, Senator Hickenlooper from Colorado to celebrate uh, Pat O'Toole's uh, life. Pat O'Toole was a rancher, as you've heard, a conservationist whose family's sixth generation operation, the latter ranch, straddles the Colorado and, and Wyoming border, as my colleague from Wyoming said. The proud son of Irish immigrants, Pat was born in Pittsburgh, but like many of us, he felt a calling to the West. He attended Colorado State University, where he met his beloved wife, Sharon, who's here today. After graduation, they were both accepted into law school, Mr. President, but instead they pooled their savings to buy some old ewes and take over Sharon's family ranch. For, for eight years, they lived in a cabin on Ladder Ranch without electricity or running water. It might sound like a hardship to uh, a lot of people here, but knowing the two of them, I bet it wasn't. And they were in one of the most beautiful places uh, on this planet. In the summer, they camped while herding sheep, and bit by bit, they built their herd. Pat was a fervent advocate for the West. He cared deeply about all the wildlife in the West, the Colorado River, and protecting American agriculture. And Pat lived a life of service. He served as president, as you've heard, of the Family Farm Alliance for nearly 20 years. He sat on the boards of the Intermountain West Joint Venture and Solutions from the Land and was uh, with Senator Lummis, a, a member of the uh, Wyoming House of Representatives. When I came to the Senate in 2009, Pat was kind enough to recognize my 
failings and my uh, lack of background and lack of experience in the things that he cared most about. And he was kind enough to bring me up to speed on Colorado and Western agriculture. I'm still trying to catch up, but here, this is the photo I wanted to bring today. This is a photo of Pat telling me what I need to know about Western agriculture on his ranch. You can tell I'm listening more intently, Mr. President, than I often do, certainly on this floor. But there was not a word you wanted to miss from Pat. There was nobody better to be the guide of people in this place so far from the ranch where he and Sharon raised their family. And we needed to listen because ranching touches every major Western issue. Water, immigration, tribal rights, conservation, and even access to health care. Pat cared about all those things. Those who were lucky enough to know Pat, know he had a lot of big ideas, and he had the drive to get those big ideas done. He was a doer, and he also had an amazing Rolodex. Most recently, Pat brought together a broad coalition with the goal of restoring the stressed landscapes of the Route and Medicine Bow National Forests and the contiguous Yampa and Little Snake watersheds. My staff and I we're honored to be included in that coalition. I should say, Mr. President, that was one of the amazing things about Pat. He could have cared less what your title was or whether you were a senator or not. He, his interactions with the staff were just as significant, I think, and just as meaningful for getting something done as they were with elected officials. And I, I hope and believe that that coalition will work to carry on Pat's legacy of conservation and tireless work to improve watershed health. In 2018, I had the pleasure to visit Pat's uh, ranch, nestled in the Little Snake River Valley, and saw firsthand the conservation practices that he and Sharon have put in place to restore fish habitat and improve the resilience of the operation. There are a lot of people they can learn from what they've done. After touring the ranch, Pat brought together people from all over the West, Republicans and Democrats, and Senator Barrasso said it didn't matter, never talked about what party anybody was in, to join us on their porch for a big cookout while we talked about the new generation of ranchers in the West and how we can leave our kids and our grandkids a better Future. He actually knew that the state line, that while the state line between uh, Colorado and Wyoming div technically divided the ranch, that a political boundary like that was not the important boundary. What he would tell you is that the watershed is what actually matters, and that's why it's not surprising that he brought together people, a rare occasion really for an elected official from Colorado to meet with people from the Wyoming legislature who were there that day to hear from what Pat um, had to say. And we, we covered topics on that day that ranged from conservation uh, 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 throughout the West to the, how we could work together to protect our water and leave a viable future for the next generation of farmers and ranchers. There were always young people around Pat, and there were that day, and when he brought people to Washington as well. And even though, as I mentioned, Pat and Sharon's house was in Wyoming, they made sure my staff and I had the farmhouse across the street on the Colorado side of the road, where we could spend the night under our own stars in our own state. The next morning at the end of our visit, Pat showed me around the barns and shared with me a branding iron from the Ladder Ranch, which I still have in my office in Denver, although come to think of it, it could be more use here in Washington, D.C. Anyone who knew Pat knew about his love for his family, 
and he proudly brought his children and grandchildren into every aspect of the ranch. Uh, it's an ama amazing testament, I think, to uh, the way he approached that uh, world and that business and that enterprise, because each of us today is reminding people here today that he cherished the idea that their ranch raised cattle, sheep, horses, dogs, and children. I'm sure not in that order. And he managed the ranch with these kids and these grandkids in mind. I want to recognize Pat's wife, Sharon, uh, her daughter, Bridget, and, and, the grand, and granddaughter, Siobhan, who are here in the gallery. They're carrying on Pat's legacy and the legacy of the Ladder Ranch. When I was flying back uh, last weekend from um, Ukraine, that's when I got a message that said that Pat had had a stroke and was in Grand Junction at the hospital. And um, I, I had the chance, I landed at uh, the airport in Ireland. I suppose there's some, uh, there's something in that and was able to have a conversation with Sharon and the first thing she wanted to tell me, I mean, she was by Pat's side uh, in Grand Junction. The first thing she wanted to tell me was that, Sh that Siobhan was coming back here uh, to carry on Pat's legacy, uh, 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 to advocate uh, as part of the Intermountain Joint Venture fly-in. Pat was on the board of that, and, and they're all here today. And I want to thank them for traveling here to be here today. Our thoughts are with you and the entire uh, Pat O'Toole family, but really they're for all of us in the West that have lost his presence, but not his example. Pat's life is evidence that division is not the way to make progress in our country. It's not the way to make progress in American agriculture or when it comes to water. Pat showed us what it takes to make headway on some of the thorniest issues that we confront, we would do well to remember that example every day. He demonstrated the importance of finding common ground to build little by little towards something greater for the next generation. And at least with me, he showed infinite patience. I hope that's something that we can all carry on in his absence, he was larger than life, and we will miss him dearly. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the floor. Mr. President. Senator from Colorado. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, and I'm not sure I can add too much more beyond what has already been said. Uh, I come to the floor today to remember and add to the remembrances of the incredible life and the impactful legacy of, of Pat O'Toole. Senators Barrasso and uh, Lummis, uh, my fellow Colorado Senator uh, Bennett have been uh, uh, very eloquent. Uh, but I think sometimes, really, it has to be said by everyone, if everything has already been said. Um, as was mentioned, he lived on the Little Snake River Valley that winds back and forth along the border of Colorado and Wyoming. Uh, and he did make a very big impression on both states. Uh, he may have legally resided in Wyoming, but both states claim him. And more than anything else, he was a Westerner, in many ways a consummate Westerner. Pat understood Western water and agriculture. He understood conservation. And just as the West was built by barn raisings more than shootouts. He harnessed the power of collaboration to really get to the heart of the, the complex discussions on managing our water and our natural resources. Uh, he was not only a graduate of Colorado State University, he was a longtime supporter. Uh, obviously, he fell in love, met his wife to find his future at CSU before he went off to South America for a little touring. Uh, he went on to serve as the longtime president of the Family Farm Alliance, which stood up for irrigators all over the West and recognized the importance of food to the, to the future of the country. And he touched 
many different groups at that intersection between agriculture and the environment. His public service and engagement span decades, including service as a state legislator, state legislator in Wyoming, uh, and as an appointee on President Clinton's Western Water Policy Commission. But Pat's impact wasn't just limited to the West. He was well known here on Capitol Hill, as each of the other senators have said, he testified many times, more than 20 times uh, here in Congress. And this was not because he liked doing it uh, or he enjoyed it, but he recognized he had a responsibility to share his expertise and to engage on legislation. He did it not because he found coming to Washington pleasurable, but because he believed in the West and his responsibility to make sure that the West, the decisions affecting the West were made wisely. And he really pushed to make sure that we had advancements in Western water management. As Western states continue to wrestle with the extreme droughts caused by climate change, Pat's wisdom is gonna direct us to good solutions and his attention to process is gonna inform us. I think it's important to remember that no matter how many hats he wore, he was always a rancher at heart, raising cattle, sheep, dogs, and children on his family ranch. He was deeply committed to preserving the farming and ranching character that's so essential to the West. And he recognized the importance of conservation in protecting and maintaining that heritage. Pat's enduring love of the land is an example to all of us. Uh, I understand and recognize that the great loss to the family, and appreciate that Sharon, Bridget, and Siobhan are here, but really it's all of our loss, and he will be sorely missed by our entire country. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the floor.